Uh, how I do that is I actually go into my material editor, click on a blank shader, go to my diffuse option box, and instead of using bitmap, I'm going to use checker. Under checker here, we have our tiling, and our tiling is set to 1 by 1 by default. I'm going to set this to 10 by 10, and then click on this little test tube here with the up arrow. This is show end result. This will display our map, and this map has 100, 100 little checkers on it now. So with this shader, I'll apply it to our model and click on the show map and viewport. And you'll see that the model appears all chaotic. And that's because it doesn't really have any defined UVs. Is It has the inherent UVs that are created on the creation of the object. And just so that we can see what's going on here, so I'll go to my modifier list and go down to the unwrap UVW modifier. When I click on that, you can see that this is my texture space. Uh, we can't really make heads or tails out of any of this. So we need to do some adjustments and do some projections to our model before we begin messing with the unwrap UVW. So I'm just going to delete that. Um, to get a quick start, we could always you know, we could always just go and planar map this. So we could just go modifier list, go down to the UVW map modifier. Our type here is planar, so it's doing a flat projection down on top of the surface. But we want to change the alignment, so we want to change it to Y or X, and I'll just do Y. And this is going to do a front projection that projects through into the back. This works for some objects, but again, for our character, it's really not going to work. I mean, it will work for his face and the front of his coat, but when we look at the sides, it's really messed up, and the back looks fine. So this doesn't work the way that we would like it. So we are going to be using that UVW map projection to do our, our different surfaces. However, we're going to be doing it a little differently. Is We're going to actually be selecting a series of objects or a series of faces and then working from there. And if you remember, we applied smoothing groups to our, our model. So we're going to actually use the smoothing groups to help us out. So I'm going to go down right here, and we're my, I'm in my polygon subobject mode right here. And right now I'm going to do select by smoothing group. And I have seven smoothing groups. So I'm going to do one and hit OK. And then it selects the faces for our top hat. With those faces selected, I'm going to go down to the UVW map modifier. And planar map is just a flat projection. It's not really the shape of our selection. So I'm going to go to cylindrical. And cylindrical is a cylinder projection around the hat. So it looks a lot better. Then I'll just click on fit. And that really doesn't do anything. Uh, fit will just expand the cage to, ar to fit around the selection. Then I can adjust my length, width, and height values. And I'm going to just adjust the height value so that I get checkers that are square. Um, keeping in mind that the hat itself is tilted, what I want to do is click on the plus symbol to get access to the gizmo here, and then press E. So I bring up my rotate tool. And I'm just going to rotate this so that it's about the right angle for the hat. Then I'll go to the side view and do the same thing. Then jump back to perspective. And we can still see that there's some stretching on the top and the inside of the hat here. But, I mean, the most for the most part, this part of the hat looks good. I mean, when we think about it, the hat itself is that this is going to be black or a dark color, but being able to see the sides of the hat, whether there's a trim or something, is more important. So this will be sufficient, and I'm just going to get out of the gizmo, click on the UVW map modifier so it's gray, and then right-click and collapse all. When we get that pop-up, it says, do we want to hold, or do we want to do this? Just hit yes, confirming that we collapse this down. So now I have that selected, and now I'm ready to move on to the next smoothing group. So again, be in my polygon sub-object mode, deselect, select by smoothing group, 
and now I want to select by two. So I want to uncheck one first, and then select two. And two is my head. And for the head, I'm going to try to use the same cylindrical, but I might change it up. So I'm going to go to my modifier list, go down to UVW map. Planar is clearly not going to work on this. But like I said, is I'm going to try it with a uh, cylindrical and see how I can get this to work. I'll click fit so it wraps around the entire head. And now I'm going to adjust the height value. And, I mean, there's some stretching on the nose here, and there's some stretching on where the hair is, but overall it's not too bad. I'm going to click on the gizmo, though, and what I want to do is, with the gizmo selected, scroll down to the bottom to display here, and click on show thick seam display. And why this is important is to see where the seam is located on our head. And right now, it's located running along the back, and then it, it sort of jets back here. Um, I mean, running along the back of the head, we want that. I mean, we're typically not going to see the back of the character too often, so we want the location of the seam right there. So this works. Um, I mean, again, the front of the face looks pretty good. The nose is the only thing that could have some stretching issues. So this looks pretty good, and I'll just collapse this down. So we have two sections down, and we're moving on. So select by smoothing group, I'm going to uncheck 2, click on 3, and 3 is the shirt here, modifier list, UVW map, change my alignment to Y, and then click fit, and this is one that we can actually get away with a planar map. So it's just going to be a flat projection onto the, the sh front of his bodice here, and I'll just adjust the length or the width, again trying to get squares. and that looks pretty good and right click collapse all now deselect go back to my smoothing groups select by smoothing group go to four hit ok uh, I have the, the inside of the shirt and the pants here this is going to be a little tricky because of what we're trying to accomplish here it's a number a number of different sections so we'll do a UVW map and I'm gonna just use a cylindrical map and it's gonna be wrong because like the inside of the legs need to be adjusted uh, the only thing I want to do is just make sure that my seam is on the back and yeah there there's the seam so this should work without too much of a hassle um, and I'm, I'm just hesitating a little bit because of some of the seams that are on the front here, I, I don't, I don't ideally want those, but it'll have to do. So I'll just collapse this, and then move on to the next one. So this is hopefully you're noticing is just a repetitive process that I'm I'm going through, and based on the shape itself, is I'm doing a series of projections too. So I have smoothie group five now, which is the shoes. And the shoes really don't have anything great to work from, so I'm just going to do a planar map. And I'll just keep it default and collapse all. I'm on to six, which is the jacket. Uh, with the jacket, again, UVW map. Um, I'm going to try. Uh, spherical map and the spherical map should do a decent job on a majority of the jacket but there are going to be some areas that it fails like the sleeves uh, the other thing I want to check here is the actual location of the seams because ideally we would want this on the back if we could 
it's really not going to let me get it on the back itself. So I'll just try to throw it on the front. Yeah, I'll just throw it on the front. And the, the sleeves themselves are messed up, and we'll have to work with that. But you can see that the coat itself doesn't look too, too bad, or at least it shouldn't look too, too bad. And I'll just collapse this down and move on to the next and last sec selection, which should be the hands at 7. And with the hands, we're just going to do a planar map. fit and then adjust like the width or height and I'm gonna just cheat with the hands a little bit <laughs> and what I mean by that is I'm gonna set the length and width to like 40 by 40 and even though the projection isn't touching them is that it, it's going to still project them as you can see that I have square checkers but the the actual location of the projection is right here it doesn't matter is that this box here whether it's the cylind cylindrical map or the spherical map is the projection of the 0 to 1 space and we'll be getting more into the 0 to 1 space momentarily so now I'll just collapse this down. And now we have the basic projections done for our penguin character. Uh, we would definitely, or no, we definitely do want to save here. So I'm going to do file save as. And once I've saved this, now I'm going to go to my modifier list and go down to unwrap UVW. When I get into unwrap UVW, is that we have three sub-object modes, vertex, edge, and face. These are the only sub-object modes that you want to mess with. All right, You don't want to come back to editable poly and jump to any of these. There are instances when you may do this, but do not get in the habit of doing this because you will destroy your unwrap and waste a lot of time. It will be frustrating. Um, so once I have the unwrap here, like I said, we have our vertex edge and face sub object mode. Great. Uh, what we're going to do is right here under parameters, we're going to press edit. And we saw the UVW space before and it looked all messed up. And I mean, this looks as messed up. However, it's not as bad as what it might seem. The reason I say that is that if we jump to our face sub object mode, and right here under our selection parameters is we have something called select CG. CG, or sorry, not CG, SG. Select SG. SG is smoothing groups. So if I go select SG1, this right here, if I drag it off, is the top hat. If I go to select SG2, this here is the face. If I go to select SG3, this is the front of the shirt. If I go to select SG4, here's the pants and the trim. 